Melnick Mode is back, and I'm not sure if I'm looking forward to this particular episode. Our second season is about to begin. There's been quite a few changes to the roster, of course, as you know, if you watched the last episode. And if you didn't watch the last episode, what are you watching this one for? You're weird, but I love you anyway. The main reason I'm not looking forward to this episode here is because for the first time, we are going to have the inclusion of what was suggested a few episodes ago... That being the controversy wheel in this series, because as we all know, when it comes to Eugene Melnick, that man cannot go a year, a single year, without having some sort of controversy, where he tries to screw over the city of Ottawa, uh, where it looks like he was using charitable funds in a way that wasn't supposed to be used. He's a lovely human being. He is a fantastic man, and in no way... Are we making fun of him in this? That's exactly what we're doing. We're making fun of him in this series. He's a scumbag, and for Sens fans, I hope he sells the team so you don't have to hate your owner. Like, I hate my owner. Like, Jeremy Jacobs of the Bruins, he's a dick. He's at least not like Eugene Melnick levels of dick, though. So that's that's promising. Anyway, let's we'll stop procrastinating on that front. A quick look at the team before we uh, go through this whole controversy wheel and figure out exactly what's going to happen there. Now, the big question was whether or not we sign Alexi Lafreniere, and as you can see, I ultimately decided on signing Lafreniere. He's not an amazing fit for that second line, but it'll have to do for now. Uh, eventually, I mean, he's a good fit for the top line. Pretty much run him on the second line for this season, and then hopefully next season it's Kachuk, White, and Lafreniere on that top line. But for now, we're going to play him. I mean, he's an 83 overall. It would be kind of ridiculous to leave him in the AHL. There is that debate over whether or not his development would be, uh, you know, would go along a bit more smoothly from playing where he should be right now, if not above where he should be, or if it would be better suited to just leave him unsigned. But we signed him. And overall, I don't hate where the team is. I mean, Kachuk, White, and Hall, there was some controversy with Taylor Hall. Ultimately, the majority of the comments like, okay, don't worry about it. Whether or not we flip him in February, time will tell. Uh, there's a good shot at that. But at the end of the day, too, uh, there was that miscommunication and misunderstanding with me when it came to uh, how much uh, the salary cap ceiling was this season. I don't know how I got confused on that. That's why you don't record when you're tired. If you're ever going to start up on the YouTube side of things, don't do it. It's a nightmare. But overall, again... Team's looking good. Lafreniere, Nemesnikov, Ryan, pretty good line. Mikheyev with Logan Brown and Connor Brown, no relation, of course. And then Paul Anisimov, and I thought he'd be the AHL captain. Uh, we're going to run Scott Sabrin on the fourth line, and he's going to end up with 17,000 penalty minutes, but I'm here for it. Defensively, there was another question here, and that's what do I do with Eric Brandstrom? Same thing as Lafreniere. Would he be better suited not playing in the NHL, or do we give him a good role? He's going to be alongside Thomas Shabbat. Hopefully that helps him develop. But from here, the defense is a little bit shaky. Borowiecki, Lyabushkin, Graves, and Zaitsev. And the reason for that is I felt like it was better to play Lejoie, Yaros, and Milanen in the AHL to try and get a little bit of extra development out of them. Uh, unfortunately, I have to have a minus one on the third pairing no matter who we play there. So that kind of sucks. But I'm hoping that, you know, I mean, the defense was going to be shaky anyway, but I'm hoping as you can probably tell by the AHL defense and the forward line defense and the forward lines that we actually end up doing okay when it comes to our prospects you know in Belleville probably making the playoffs hopefully having success in the playoffs and benefiting from that instead of playing in the bottom six so like Batherson Balsers like could they be in the NHL right now absolutely but we're gonna we're gonna see how that works out for us the goaltending for the NHL side of things, Alinas Allmark is going to be our starter. Aiden Hill is there with him. Two new free agent signings. Uh, Anders Nilsson has a healthy scratch. We kind of need him as a cap dump right now. I mean, it's the last year of his deal, but he'll be a healthy scratch. Josh Brown and Michael Carcone, Carconi, I'm not sure which, is, uh, yeah, is the healthy scratch there. And again, the AHL, you've seen the offense, you've seen the defense. Goaltenders, Hogberg and Gustafsson. So, you know, because I have so much success with Swedish goaltenders in the history of this channel, so why not have two of them on that particular team? So, you've seen the roster, but the question is whether or not the team is going to stay this way. We are going to sim to the beginning of the regular season here. We'll get a look at the overall ratings for this team. And from there, well, from there we're going to see... When this particular controversy for this season is going to take place. Now, I will say, I will say, 
if you have any suggestions for kind of fun controversies that we could see every season, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, you know, just kind of fun scenarios where it's like, hey, here's some crazy, ridiculous, how is this real, but you could actually see Eugene Malik being involved in it, scenarios uh, that could make this a little bit more fun. That said, overall ratings, we play Washington to start the season. 86-84 uh, and a 74. That's, that's probably better than what we could have hoped it would be. I mean, especially with the loss of, like, Duclair. But I'm, I'm not too mad about that. We're actually in a half-decent spot. So with that, for the first time, the controversy wheel makes its, de makes its debut. And the first thing that we have to figure out here is what month is this controversy going to take place? And it's between October and February, because if we do March and April and it's a player that we were to lose, unfortunately, of course, I wouldn't be able to get rid of them. So first and foremost, when is this particular controversy taking place? We spin the wheel, and the answer is sooner rather than later. It's in November. So we have one month. Oh, boy. One month of a clear mind and a little bit of peace. So... We're not going to get to the second wheel yet. We'll get to that momentarily. For now, let's just see what this team can do for the first month before some craziness happens and we lose, again, either an NHL player, an AHL player, a coach, or a staff member. So let's see if the Sens can at least uh, instill a little bit of confidence. I mean, you look at the real-life Sens this past season, obviously, before everything went crazy. Uh, they actually did have a couple of good, you know, winning streaks at some points in the season. So maybe we can replicate that. I'll get you a look at the draft class here as well. Again, remember, we have a good amount of created players as well. And there will be computer-generated players like Malachi Thorburn. What a name. And Robin Hommel. He's German. And, uh, wow, there's actually quite a few computer-generated players. Mowers is there. But, like, Lucius, Kent Johnson, Fabian LaSalle... Uh, even this dude is real. So, a lot of real world players that we've added in. But right now, 4-2 and two record. Can we end the season now? We might make the playoffs. We lose to Edmonton. We beat Detroit and Buffalo. That's promising. Lose to Minnesota in overtime. And our final game of the month is against Carolina and we lose. But 6-4-1 and one to start the season. I mean, almost an identical record as Toronto. When you think of the optics of where they should be. Taylor Hall has 16 points in 11 games. So... If we do ultimately decide that we're allowed to flip him, that looks like it's going to be pretty uh, beneficial for us. As Brady Kachuk has 14 points in 11 games. Colin White doing very well on that top line. Again, have the concerns as to whether or not he'd actually be top line center worthy. Lafreniere has 7 points and 5 goals in 11 games. Very good for him. Uh, Nemesnikov, eh, and then Bobby Ryan, eh, also kind of meh. That line, 5-on-5, five five, they're not doing too well. Third line is struggling a bit. Connor Brown's doing well. And then the fourth line of Nick Paul, Artem Anisimov. Scott Sabrin, surprisingly, has only taken one penalty. That's insane. He has 90 aggressiveness. I don't understand that. Uh, defensively, Shabbat's looking okay. Brandstrom hasn't done much. Borowiecki's looking all right. Leah Bushkin's looking okay. Graves and Zaitsev not looking so good. And when it comes to the goaltending, Allmark has been horrible. Aiden Hill has been horrible. How do we have a winning record right now? <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Speaking of no sense, Eugene Melnick. The question is, who is he going to piss off? Now, the scenario is uh is interesting i did ask uh the patreon which is why i have that tab open as far as what's the scenario going to be and i'll let you know that in a minute <sighs> who are we going to be losing please be a coach or a scout please okay we're losing a coach thank god that's easy enough to deal with <laughs> that is easy enough to deal with thank god for that so we had the player wheels but now we have the coach wheel who are we losing for the rest of the season? Now, losing a coach for the rest of the season absolutely sucks. Now, it can end up being an AHL coach, and we're going to see which one it is. It's going to be an NHL coach. We're going to be losing our assistant coach for the rest of the year. How much of an effect is that going to have? I'm not sure. But the scenario was basically this. Uh, Melnick 
uh, decided to put synthetic ice instead of real ice in the practice arena to save a few hundred thousand bucks maybe on maintaining the ice. And uh, yeah, you know, instead of cutting more staff as well. But essentially, uh, our good old assistant coach here, who's not that good, thank God, uh, Peter Mikus is just, uh, he's too old for this shit. That's what it is. He's too old for this shit. He's not having it. He thinks it's a danger to the players. He speaks up to Melnick, and Melnick fires him because, hey, why not? We, we've seen that in real life. Somebody during an argument, the president of the team dared to swear at Eugene Melnick, and he fired him. So, Mikus, you're out of here for voicing your displeasure with the team. That is not allowed. Goodbye, and thankfully, that is our only punishment for this season. But still, how much of an effect is that going to have, having lost one of our coaches? You know, I, I didn't even see what his specialty was, actually. I didn't notice if he was a generalist, a defense, or forward coach. But still, even though he's only a C-grade coach, that could end up being a pretty big detriment to this team moving forward. Although saying that, we've won two out of three games. So, maybe we're better off without him. Time will tell. But, obviously, it's kind of nice that we dodged the bullet on the first attempt here. Instead of immediately, say, losing our head coach, who was an A-grade, and then we're completely screwed... So, very happy that that was at least somewhat kind, that it wasn't a player, because that could have been incredibly, uh, incredibly brutal for us. A thing to point out as well, I did end up signing two players, I forget to recap it, but Jansen Harkins, who uh, I thought I might play on the fourth line in the NHL before I signed Lafreniere, and Kevin Stenland uh, were both signed as free agents, just for the sake of transparency. Did that say Carolina were 16-1-1? One one? Oh my god. Look out for the Carolina Hurricanes, apparently. Jesus. 16-1-2 now. That is absolutely crazy. As Bobby Ryan fractures his elbow. He's only going to be out for a month with a fracture. How? I don't know. I hear the words fractured elbow, and I'm like, okay, my career's over. I guess not. So instead of calling up somebody, we're just going to let them play in the AHL. Michael Carcone's going to get the call up. And we are going to leave him on that second line, maybe? Hold on. Uh, if we bump up Logan Brown, can Carcone play center? He can't. I'm going to lose the plus ones, or at least on the third line. Let's call up Connor Brown, get him into a better spot. And then for the three-on-three -three lines, Borvietsky, I'd said let's get Brandstrom some time on that particular line. And we should be okay. But Bobby Ryan goes down to injury. It's a pretty big loss because this team's actually playing really well right now. Second in the division through 20-some-odd games. And Taylor Hall goes down to a concussion. <laughs> okay, well now we have to call somebody up, don't we? That sucks. Oh, the injuries. <sighs> okay, let's make the best of this if we can. Who are we going to call up here? I don't want to lose Howard Luck to waivers, so we'd be looking at, like, Batherson and Formanton. I guess that's what we have to do, because I don't want to lose anybody to waivers. That's the way to go. Otherwise, we're looking at, like, Kastelik and Kelly. You know, actually, Kastelik... You know, let's call up these two. Let's call up these two, and then that way we're not taking away those prime minutes from our better prospects in the AHL. I just want to let them play their game and be happy. So, looking at the team here, because this is going to be, yeah, this is this is a mess right now. We have to fix this up as best we can. Uh, let's go Kelly Castor, look Carconi. I don't hate, Kelly was a better center, wasn't he? Oh, the menu lag. Yeah, he's a slightly better centerman, so we'll go with that. We'll have, uh, what do we want to go with here? Because we do have options. I guess we will go Kachuk, White, Lafreniere. I think we'll go with Mikheyev, Nemesnikov, Connor Brown. And play Logan Brown with Anisimov. Although Logan Brown's apparently a better sentiment. Let's go with that. We lose a lot of the uh, pluses on the chemistry. But beggars cannot be choosers. So we'll go with that. The AHL, we're just going to go best lines. Yeah, we'll fix all that up later. I mean, we're going to have to fix it again a little bit later on anyway. So we did uh, we did lose to Vancouver in that game, but we are tied for first at 16-9-1 and 1 
atop the division right now, which is tremendous. I mean, I still think when we get to February, the decision, as Taylor Hall is back, we're going to have to make that call as to whether or not Hall gets traded, which I think, you know, the best decision is that, yeah, he should still probably go. I mean, even if we're in a playoff spot, it's not as if this team in its current form is going to win, although in saying that, crazier things have happened with this sim engine. The Scott Sabrin's the healthy scratch. So let's take out Carcone. Get Sabrin back in there, who I think was a healthy scratch accidentally. Uh, Castellet can play. I mean, he's a power forward. It's either him or Carcone. Let's just go with Castellet while we still have him here. That's fine. And then that third line, let's go with... Who is where? This is, this is a weird setup. Paul, Brown, and Brown. Get White back up onto that top line, and I guess... There we go. That's that's the setup that we wanted. And then defensively, it's a gigantic pain to have to fix this over and over. But there we go. We're good. And again, down in the AHL, we'll just go best lines. It's fine. Some of our younger uh, defensive prospects don't get into the lineup, but that's okay. So we beat Tampa. Draft class uh, update, we don't need it. Taylor Hall is at 100%. Shout out to that truck that I'm sure you can probably hear. Probably. Maybe. What are you going to do? It's Colorado. We get the win. Nashville, we lose. Columbus, we win. We might actually we might actually make a push for the playoffs here at this rate. I'll get you a stat update on uh, January 1st, which is coming up very, very soon. We'll send down Castellic because at least we know our Castellic. K-A-S-T-E-L-I-C. I'm going to go with Gastelic. It might be Lich, though. Who's to say? Uh, let's get Carconi out of there. I hate that it puts Colin White on the fourth line every time we go best lines. It is unfortunate, to say the least. So that right there is the team. Perfect. We'll make this switch. And Leah Bushkin for Graves. There we go. All right, let's keep going. Didn't go best lines in the AHL, but that's okay. I'm going to have to fix it up anyway. As we lose to Buffalo, Bobby's back to 100%. We are losing more games here now, though, consistently. So might have jumped the gun on the playoff uh, the playoff prediction as Nikita Zaitsev goes down to injury, which might honestly be a good thing for us. It's a player I wouldn't mind moving. Obviously, those contract's a nightmare. So still at 21-15-3, and three, probably better than what we deserve to be. We are currently in a playoff spot as we are just about at the halfway point of this season. So we're still looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the stats here despite some of the injuries. So Brady Kachuk's amazing. 47 points in 39 games. Colin White, point per game. Fantastic from him. Taylor Hall's been great. Lafreniere, I mean, 20, 22 points in 39 games is pretty good. Let's be honest. Uh, Nemesnikov, four goals, 20 assists. Nice. Uh, 24 points for him. Only 16 points for Bobby Ryan in 30 games, though, so that's still pretty good. Uh, Mikheyev has 14 goals. Happy with that. 22 points. Brown's been okay. Connor Brown's been great. Uh, Nick Paul's been fine. Anisimov's been great. And Scott Sabrin has a goal. <laughs> so that's amazing. Defensively, Shabbat looking good. Brandstrom looking all right. Borowiecki has 66 penalty minutes. Jesus, settle down. Uh, Leah Bushkin looking good. I mean, to be honest, the defense is fine. I mean, it has uh, Josh Brown in right now because of the injury, but that's okay. Goaltending wise, Allmark's been good. Aiden Hill's still struggling a little bit. A little bit. Uh, we might have to give Anders Nilsson some time as the, as the backup. And the problem with Aiden Hill is that I really don't have anywhere to send him aside from off of the team. He just, you know, he, we don't have a spot for him in the AHL at all. So it's either he makes it or he doesn't, one way or another. So the one thing I am going to change now, some people might disagree with this and consider it slightly cheap, but in my opinion, there's nothing cheap about telling Mark Borowiecki uh, to not fight everything that moves. I don't think there's anything cheap about that. It's like, hey, you're taking 17,000 penalty minutes. I'm not going to tell him to never fight because it's what he does. But, you know, instead of often, how about how about rarely? How about rarely? Drop, you know, drop the gloves when it's necessary. When is it necessary to punch someone in the face? You decide. 
but let's let's not let's not cost us games by you taking a thousand penalty minutes, huh? Cool. So let's move on. We'll sim up to February, and depending on the situation, I still think it's going to be a good idea to trade Taylor Hall, but we might have a decision that needs to be made in terms of. Do we just kind of go for it to see what happens? Because as it stands, I mean, yeah, we are going to make the playoffs if we continue to play at this high of a level. And we'll get Josh Brown out for Nikita Zaitsev, who, I mean, again, you saw the stats a few seconds ago. He's actually been pretty decent this year, back-to-back. -back. Actually, wow, it's four wins in a row for this team. Can't make it five with a loss to Winnipeg. Norris is back. We'll just go best lines. We're still threatening. And we do take the number one spot in the division right now over Tampa. Oh, this game. I mean, clearly that's all we needed was Taylor Hall and Alexis Lafreniere. And everything's going to be fine. As we hit the totally not all-star break, we lost to Calgary. But January was very, very kind to the Ottawa Senators. Except for on the final day where Logan Brown picks up a minor concussion. Is there such a thing as a minor concussion? I don't think so, personally. But that's just the way you frame it, I guess. So 29, 19, and 3. As of February 1st, we're in first place uh, in the division, or we were at least. Boston has us right now uh, due to games at hand. 61 points each. But Taylor Hall's doing fantastically for us. There's really not much we can do aside from just sim to the deadline and then decide from there are we keeping taylor hall or not like long term wow anders nilsson's been amazing long term it does not make sense to hold on to taylor hall it's get what we can for him this season but you never know with the way this game works there is a legitimate chance we could win this year it makes no sense at all but it could happen as I want to take a look at whether or not we can get anything for Aiden Hill. And the answer is yes. A fifth rounder from Chicago. A fifth and a seventh from San Jose. Or Tim Heed. I don't know. Aiden Hill has been kind of rough this year. Let me double check this. Let me double check this. Shall we? Is he worth a fifth rounder? He's been, he's been okay. I'm going to hold on to him. I think that would be a little bit harsh to get rid of him. We need as many options in goal as we can get. Especially with Anders Nilsson's deal being up at the end of the year. Although if he wants to keep playing like this, then who's to say? So we'll follow along through February. We beat the Vegas Golden Knights 5-2. to two. Arizona's next. Taylor Hall's former team. We get a pity point in the shootout. Chicago as Allmark injures his wrist. So it's a good thing we have Aiden Hill. We beat Chicago in overtime 4-3, to three, and Logan Brown is back. Good thing is, Carcone fits in pretty well on that third line. He hasn't done much this season, but he was kind of the perfect guy to just use as a healthy scratch, where it's like, you're not really going to develop. You can at least be useful to us in this way. So Boston's next. They are right there with us towards the top of the division, and we get a huge 6-2 to two win. We are going to have to make a decision as to whether or not we actually want to try to go for it. This is crazy. St. Louis is next. About midway through February. Allmark's back. Um, I could have just left Aiden Hill. You know, I'm just going to leave Aiden Hill as the backup for now. It's fine. We beat the Blues. This is crazy. Seven wins in our last ten games. Back-to-back uh, -to -back, Toronto and Montreal. Beat the Leafs 6-3. to three. Beat Montreal 4-1. to one. We've still won seven of our last ten games. And have a little bit of separation on Boston. Not much. New Jersey. It's a win. How is this team doing this? Pittsburgh. Identical record. We finally lose another game. That took forever. And then we have another big game against Boston. The deadline's coming up. No teams are really making moves. We shut out the Bruins 4 to nothing. The Islanders are next. It's an overtime loss. I, I have to check to see if I forgot to turn computer trades back on, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. I'm pretty sure we turned those back on. I'm fairly certain. Oh, whoops. <laughs> well, that would explain why there's been no trades, but that's okay. The AI will have time here. I was wondering why there were no trades. That's not the first time I've forgotten to turn that back on after a season 
It's cool. The AI has a couple of days now to make trades if they want to. We'll see if anything crazy happens. And if not, then, uh, hey, it was a very uncharacteristically quiet deadline day, right? Right. Is there probably going to be a trade here? No. Okay. So we've hit deadline day. Uh, an extremely quiet deadline day because I forgot to look over my settings, which happens. But hey, it's, it's fair game for everybody. You run with the rosters that you have. So the question at 37, 20, and 6 is whether or not we move our leading scorer, Taylor Hall, or if we just go into the playoffs and say, you know, with the way this game works, we might actually be able to win a cup this year. Brady Kachuk has been fantastic. 68 points in 63 games. Colin White is proving that he is at least a top six centerman, if not having a chance of being a number one centerman, which is great news. And then, of course, Taylor Hall has been amazing. Again, one year at 8.8 .8 million. So for those of you who are on the side of you know, don't trade him because he was slightly over what you should have been allowed to sign. I think I know which way you're going to vote. Lafreniere has a shot at the Calder. Nemestnikov's been great. Bobby Ryan's been really good. Mikheyev has 30 goals. I mean, this team's been fantastic. It's just, do we, do we reward them by just keeping them together and saying, okay, let's see what you can do. Or do we punish them for probably the greater long-term good? And we sell off some pieces. The reason why it might not be worth it... Anders Nilsson's been amazing. The reason why it might not be worth it... Again, if we get into the playoffs, who knows what'll happen with this team. But if we do sell... I mean, we might have already screwed ourselves out of a better draft pick. I mean, we're guaranteed almost to make the playoffs at this point. So do we have it where we just have the best chance possible to find success in the playoffs? That is the question. And I don't know the answer. I mean, especially to you look at trade values here. Like, we could definitely sell Borowiecki and get something for him. I'm actually intrigued to see what that's going to look like here. And the answer is a second and a third. I mean, that's tough to say no to, even with us, you know, facing down the option of potentially making the playoffs here and potentially doing well. And then obviously, now the big thing we got to worry about next year is uh, Brady Kachuk's deal is up, but Taylor Hall and what we could get for him. I don't know if any deals are actually going to show up here. And it's taking forever. Fowler gets off Petrie Gallagher. Gallagher Weber, third and the fourth. I mean, we could move Taylor Hall for sure. And then, you know, you could make the argument of check to see what Connor Brown's going to want, what Nemesnikov's going to want, what a lot of these players are going to want in terms of what they're going to look to re-sign for, which we'll actually take a look. We're still listed as a rebuilder, for God's sakes. But just to take a look here, in terms of expiring deals... Now, Borowiecki doesn't want to re-sign, so he's definitely gone, as is Taylor Hall if we elect to make these moves. Brady Kachuk, there is a chance that we might not be able to re-sign Brady Kachuk. There is a chance. This season, the cap is at $87 million. Next year, it's projected to go up to 90. Of course, I made that uh, mistake in the last one in terms of what we're looking at. But with Brady Kachuk, it's going to be incredibly close. So again, if the $8 million deal for Thomas Shabbat, and uh, we'll have to do the math again on this one. So if the $8 million deal for Thomas Shabbat, that's $87 million. So again, his deal is 9.19% of the cap. So like I said, I think we're going to do anywhere between 9 to 10% of an individual contract's percentage of the cap. I mean, with Brady Kachuk, say I get him down to four years so that he's still an RFA, we should be okay, actually. 8, 7, 2, 5. Do the 85% trick. That's down to 7. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. But it, it's pretty close. But thank God we'll be all right. Connor Brown... 
There's no way we're bringing back Connor Brown at $5 million for a third liner. There's no way. So you can make the argument, trade Connor Brown now while his value is at his highest. Ilya Mikheyev, there's no way I'm paying a third liner that much money. We can't afford to do it with the limitations of this series. Artem Anisimov, there's no way we're bringing you back for that much. Unless it's a one-year deal. So as much as I hate to say it, it's either we go for it and deal with the consequences or we make the better choice long term and sell off some bit parts even though we've already screwed ourselves out of a out of a lottery pick here. So I'm going to leave that decision up to you guys. Let me know down in the comments. And again, uh, feel free to leave any suggestions you have for any crazy scenarios that you could actually see Eugene, Mel uh, you know, Eugene Melnick being involved in. And in the next episode, we're going to see what happens. It might be a very, very interesting deadline day. But for now, you know the deal. I thank you for watching. Check out everything in the description if you have not already done so. And of course, a shout out to my patrons on Patreon. I love you all. There was a Houston episode that went up yesterday. Check that out if you have not already done so. Until next time, have a good one. Take it easy. Stay safe. And I'm going to go blow my nose.